Good morning online. Happy Easter. Good morning in person. Happy Easter. We are enjoying this prelude to help us come and be present on this glorious Easter Sunday. So glad to see you all. Uh, if you are worshiping online, you may participate as fully as you can in your own space. And here I invite you to follow along in the bulletin. You can hum along to the songs and wherever there's bolded font, I invite you to speak out and fully participate. Welcome, welcome. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. to you all. I invite you to stand if you are able, as you are able. We begin our worship on this Easter Sunday with a thanksgiving for baptism. Refreshed by the resurrection life that we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains, to our thirsting earth, like streams to revive our soul, like cool cups of water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts and shower us with your life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Our gathering song is Jesus Christ is risen today. I invite you to be seated for the first three verses and on the fourth verse, we will rise up. And again, you may hum along in your space. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to invite Brian Nash to lead us in our prayer of the day. Oh God, you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we receive the word this morning. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now our psalm today is from Psalm 118. Please response in the bold. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel, Let Israel now declare. Mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation <laughs> echo in the tents of the righteous. The right May the name of the Lord act valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for he has answered me. And you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has there been done his marvelous heart. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now our second reading is from 1 Corinthians beginning the 15th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I had handed on to you as of first, impo as of first importance what I am in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the 12. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. He then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we receive the gospel acclamation.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome were brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for a Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We listen again. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, I sure feel like it's Easter. How about you? To see so many of you here in the flesh and to know that many of you are there also with us online, to feel the organ vibrating the pews and the floor, to have come through the meditative worship of Monday, Thursday and Good Friday again to smell the lilies and the tulips and imagine that if you are not here with us in person, it is Easter, amen? I even saw a little bunny in my yard and the forsythia in bloom. So it is the season. But what's with the ending of our gospel text? All this triumph, all the excitement that we anticipate on this day. And Jesus isn't even actually in our gospel text in person, right? If you think about it, we, it's the emptiness of the tomb that we get. We get a young man in a white robe giving a report. It's a pretty exciting report. And then the women flee from the tomb. This is how we end that last reading, the gospel reading. The women flee from the tomb and say nothing for they were afraid is what this text says. It's a little anticlimactic, isn't it? At the end of Mark here, now Mark, the oldest gospel, and this is the original ending of the book, there is just, if you read in the Greek, just a conjunction as the last word. Now it's a conjunction, it's a connecting word, right? It's gar, the Greek word gar. On Easter Sunday, you learned a Greek word. Say it with me, gar. It's not a very exciting word. It just means for, therefore, because I don't really know how you're going to use that when you leave here, but that's the last word of this first ending of the Gospel of Mark, gar. It just kind of hangs out there. Now, in the English translation, we kind of fit it in nicely, right? It says, and, and they fled for they were afraid. But in the Greek, that's not really where the word is. So people who have the task of translating, they have to figure out how am I going to, what am I going to do with this conjunction that's just hanging out at the end? So they find a place for it. How odd that the gospel according to Mark ends with an ellipsis, if you will. For what? Therefore... 
<laughs> because what? And so on, what? Have you ever had an invitation that didn't really feel like a very genuine one? Somebody's like, oh, we should get lunch. And you're like, mm, I'm not really sure that was, that was genuine. Or we can collaborate on this. Here's the finalized PDF. Why don't you let me know what you think? And you're like, there, I can't edit this. There's no way for me to really add anything to this. This gospel text is not that. This is not that kind of invitation. Scholars believe that this ending, this guard just hanging out there is odd enough. It's strange enough that it seems intentional. It leaves the gospel wide open. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is not a story that says, the tomb was empty, they ran in fear, the end, roll credits. Wasn't it nice? It is a story with a wide open ending. Because why? Because dot, 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 why? Because Jesus Christ is risen when? Not 2,000 years ago only, but Jesus Christ is risen. You got it. Today. It is a wide open ending because it matters for every generation that came after the writers of this gospel that Jesus was raised from the dead. It matters for us right now. The will of God for a just and loving world is a will that goes on today. It's a desire of the divine heart today that we would live in the reality that God so loved the world, amen? This is for us just as much today. This is not like a leather bound, finished volume, dusty on the shelf. It's more like a three ring binder that is calling to you, pop this open and insert your page. How do you feel when you hear that Jesus Christ was raised for you, that Jesus Christ died for your sin, that Jesus Christ calls you now into beloved community for the sake of the world. How does that make you feel? Jody? I can call on you all now, you're here in person. How does it make you feel a person who probably has some burden, some heartache, some struggle, some stress, to know that God was able to roll that stone away, even though the women were saying to themselves on the way, how will we move the stone? It's so big. How does it make you feel to know that your God could move that stone and therefore can help roll away the boulders in your life of anxiety and frustration and a sense of overwhelm? Write your page and put it in this story because your contribution matters. The invitation is wide open. How has God caused awe and wonder in you? Healing and reconciliation in your life. Why does it matter for you that Jesus Christ is risen today? How have you been transformed by this expansive, overflowing grace? We are invited to engage kind of like our communal art project, right? Sarah Lemke did a beautiful job putting this together, but it is most beautiful because we know that those crosses are, have written in them by hand the burdens and the prayers and the songs and the praises of many of this congregation folded by hand. We come together to continue the story of Jesus' resurrection. So maybe in a week from now, you send me an email with some of your thoughts about how you contribute to this story. That Jesus Christ is risen today. Amen? Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Let us 
receive the hymn of the day, thine is the glory. And again, we will near the end of that hymn stand with our choir members. join our voices together confessing our faith and we'll use the words of the Nicene Creed as it appears in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uh, as Brian comes forward to lead our prayers of intercession, kids, we're going to do a children's moment after the prayers, okay? So you get ready. All right. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. <laughs> Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve, especially Bill, Vicki, Linda, Brenda, Janet, Helen, Karen, Lisa, Sandra, Maureen, Patricia, Harvey, Jen, Chital, Lorraine, Dan, Sandy, Jen, Peyton, John, Jack, Alice, Bernie, Agostino, Richard and Nancy, Richard, Kurt, Stacy, Jocelyn, Sarah, Leona, Walter and Joan, Dottie, Jen, Marianne, Frank, Sarah, Mike and Janice, Bob, and Josh. And please continue to pray for Connie, Kim, Rick, Nancy, Lori, Julia, Betsy, Stephen, Barbara, Lisa, Amy, Jim, John, Gloria, Jimmy, Haley Ann, Fran, Lane, and Helen. And please, please pray for all the men and women currently serving in the armed forces, especially Robert, Caleb, Patrick, Matt, Christopher, Stephen, Andrew, Melanie, Brendan, Andrew, and Sean. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in, in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, 
and in our community. Hear us, O oh God. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we may join Benedict the African and all those who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another and then have a seat. And kids, come on up by me. And uh, just stand close to people who are in your family unit. So Oliver and Wesley, you can be right over here. Okay. Yep, we're gonna, yeah, Brendan, come on up. You can have a seat right there. All right, yep, Isaac, why don't you come right here, buddy? Adam, you wanna come by Isaac, Amy, and then Fader and Nash, gals, why don't you stay right there and let, uh, let Amy come up by Finola because they are related. Good, all right. Hello, oh good. And then James, you good? All right, it's so nice to see you all. Happy Easter. So we've been practicing something at our house. It is so helpful for us sometimes to have words that we know how to say and that we have memorized in our heart and our head. Do you have anything memorized? You, you just raise your hand if you've ever had to memorize something at school. Maybe like the alphabet you've had to memorize, maybe, or how to spell a particular word. So as people of faith, sometimes it's helpful for us to know things in our body so that if we're having a bad day or even if we're having a really good day, we can call on, we can bring something up in our mind that helps us remember to worship God in those times and to ask God to help us when it's hard and to worship God and be joyful with God when things are good, right? So today in our Psalm, there is a verse that I think a lot of people here might know and I, you maybe have heard it in a song. And I would like you to, to hear this again, and maybe you'll get to take some of these words with you in your head and your heart. And it, it goes like this. This is the day that the Lord has made. That's the first part. Can you try that with me? This is the day that the Lord has made. Does that sound a little familiar? Maybe to some of you, maybe not, it's okay. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're not doing a lot of singing together these days, but there's all kinds of people out there doing spoken word. And so we can do this in a way, even though we're not singing it, that still helps us remember it. Let's try again. I'll say it and then you repeat after me. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So you can have those words with you to help you remember today that today, the day that we celebrate Jesus being raised from the dead is a reason for us to rejoice and be glad, right? Who are we celebrating that's been raised from the dead? What's the name? God in Jesus. That's right. That's right. And I'm going to teach you one more thing that maybe you've heard us saying, and maybe you already know. When I say, you will do this, maybe you'll hear this every Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. You say something back to me. Christ is risen indeed. That means sure is. He sure is. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we're going to practice that one more time and then we'll pray. Ready? So I go first. You got it. I'm going to go first. Ready? Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we say that with as much joy as we can muster. So if you'll stand where you are, and I'm going to let people see you here for a second. Hi, folks on Zoom. So you can see we wave. Wave, kiddos. Yeah. Here we are, and we're going to pray together now. Okay, here we go. We're going to pray. Dear Jesus, we're going to give each other just a little more space. All right. Thank you 
for being raised and giving us a reason to have joy and be glad. Help us to share the joy of the resurrection, of the resurrection with all we meet. All right, take your hands down like this. We're going to say amen, quiet and get loud. Here we go. Amen. Awesome. You may go back to your seats. Happy Easter. At this time of worship, we always take an opportunity to lift up the offering opportunities that we have, the practice, spiritual practice of giving. So uh, in your bulletin, there are ways that you may financially contribute through, to Faith Lutheran and the ministry that happens through this place that many of you are so actively a part of. And uh, now we will uh, also an announcement that as you leave here today, if you have offering with you, there is an offering plate back here where you'll also deposit your communion cup. And I'll explain that later. So if you have offering today, uh, that plate will be back here. We'll now receive a musical offering. as you are able as we receive the offering offertory prayer. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us 
and sent us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to participate in the Great Thanksgiving. We'll read responsively as it is printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our great joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to our Lord. We remember again that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And now let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Spirit, come into this meal as we know you are already in our presence. Join us together in spirit with our sisters and brothers, our siblings in Christ all around the globe on this Easter day. Lord, Stir up in us a response to your story. Let us know as we leave this table today that what we contribute to your resurrection story matters, Lord, and that you matter for us today. Now, Lord, open our hearts and our mouths as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. I'll give some instructions for communion and then offer a blessing because we will go from the table on our way out rejoicing. Here's how we'll do communion today. We will first commune uh, people sitting in the nave in the sanctuary space here. And then uh, when this space is emptied, you all will come and commune and then exit through here so that we're not passing each other. When you come forward, please come with your hands open and allow me please to place the wafer into your hands keep your mask on. When you receive the cup, also keep your mask on, and then we'll invite you to move uh, down another step, and then you can remove your mask, consume the elements, and proceed then towards the doors in the back, and there is a bowl there for you to deposit your communion cup, and again, the offering plate is there. Uh, We'll just do our best to, to accommodate one another. You may be seated here in this space and receive the music that is played. We will begin uh, with this side. So you'll come to through the center and then exit around down the side. Christ is risen, hallelujah, yeah. 
Grace to you and peace. Happy Easter. Uh, we will worship next Sunday, 10 a.m. on Zoom, and we have a special video and music project that we'll be sharing next week, so please tune in. God bless you all, and happy Easter.